Hi guys, welcome back to Bible Time with Mrs. Barr. Today we are going to be finishing Acts chapter 2. But let's first, let's first um, start with your memory verse. This is the last time um, we will be looking at this particular memory verse. And then next week, we will move on to a new one. Okay, this is Luke chapter 1, verses 3 through 4. Therefore, since I myself have carefully investigated everything from the beginning, it seems good also to me to write an orderly account for you, most ex excellent Theopolis, so that you may know the certainty of the things you have been taught. That is Luke 1, 3 through 4. And that is your um, second memory verse because we started with the school-wide um, theme verse for the year. So let's go ahead and pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your word. We thank you um, just for the opportunity to be in your word. I pray that you would just guide and direct what I say, Lord. May it be um, pleasing to you, and may it be your words and not mine. I pray all these things in your name. Amen. Okay, um, I want to back up a little bit before I looked at before we look at the last sex section of um, Acts. I want I want to mention this. This is verse forty one. It says. Those, one second, I'm gonna make this a wee bit bigger. Okay. There, now I don't have to go down. Sorry about that. <laughs> Technical difficulties, okay. I wanna look at verse 41 before we look at the last se section. It says, those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. 3,000. That is not, not something that we hear about um, a lot of times nowadays. And this, this group of people were just, they were saturated in the Holy Spirit. They were open to listen and they're like yeah i've messed up what do i need to do to make it right what can i do to make things better and they they were just um really eager to um change their ways and um and be baptized and follow in obedience so <coughs> it's just really really powerful that those um that number of people were added to the church that day. Okay, the last section is titled, The Fellowship of the Believers. I think this one is just really powerful and encouraging. It gives us an example of what the church is supposed to look like um, today and what fellowship is supposed to look like for us. So verse 42 says, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. Everyone was filled with awe and at the, it was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles. All the believers were together and had everything in common. I want to pause there. So we'll back up. They devoted. What does devoted mean? Does that mean like, yeah, I'm going to kind of pay attention. I'm going to kind of do that. No, devoted is I am focused on that. I am fully in. I'm jumping in, you know, right in all the way. I am devoted. I'm going through. I'm doing it all. That's, that's what devoted. So they were devoted 
to the apostles' teaching. When the apostles were teaching, they were paying attention. They weren't doing anything else. They were focused. They were really paying attention. So they were de they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. So they were listening to the apostles' teaching very intently. They, they were serious about fellowship. They were serious about spending time together. They were serious about lifting each other up. They were serious about encouraging each other in, and just living in community. It I'm was, not sure I understand. Sorry. My watch is talking. It wasn't a situation of, okay, we're just going to go to church for a couple of hours and then go and have our lives. No, they were living and breathing and eating and doing everything together. And it was just, I, when I read this, I get a picture of that. And it's like, Lord, I want that. <coughs> and it becomes so exciting. So breaking of bread, felt, they had fellowship and then they're eating together and sharing. It wasn't like, okay, we brought our little lunch over here and it's just for us. Or we brought our little lunch over here and it's just for us. No, they were sharing their food, their means, whatever they had. And then they were praying. They were praying for each other. They were praying for non-believers. They were um, having a continual conversation with the Lord. And just, they kept this going because they were, they were devoted to it. They were focused on the apostles teaching to fellowship to eating together and to prayer and then the next one it says every everyone was filled with awe at the many wonders and signs performed by the apostles so the apostles are performing these signs and doing these miracles and everybody's like wow you know like they're just they're taking it in and letting it sink in and they're just they're amazed. They're, they're like, wow, this is so cool. This is so neat. It wasn't like, oh, well, he, he healed another person. Woohoo. Or, wow, he, you know, did this or that or, you know, provided for that lady. Woohoo. No, it's like, yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Like, that was the reaction. Verse 44, all the believers were together and had everything in common. So they were together. And when it says they had everything in common, that means that they shared life. They shared everything. It wasn't one person sitting off in this corner and another person sitting off in this corner and another person sitting off in this corner and just doing their thing and saying, hey, this is my stuff. No, they were sharing they were being there for each other. They were reaching out for um, each other and taking care of each other, meeting each other's needs. They had everything in common, meaning they were, when something's in common or in a common space, it's shared. Okay. Verse 45. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. And so they're sharing everything. They're taking care of everything that way. But then if they still see somebody that needs something, they're like, okay, what can I sell? What can I do to help take care of this person? That's, that's amazing. This is, again, this is grabbing at my heart saying, okay, this is how you should be living. It's a good reminder. Um, so they sold their property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. Every day they continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts. Praising God and enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord added to their number daily those who were being saved. So they, they continued to live this way. They continued to meet together. They continued to fellowship in the temple courts and 
and homes. It, it wasn't just a one day thing. It wasn't just a two day thing. They continued to do it. They continued um, to be focused on the Lord and have a sincere sincereness towards him and, and his ways. And they continued to praise God and enjoy the favor and the fellowship of God and all the people around them. And because they were living in this way, because they took <coughs> what they were told by the Holy Spirit to do, God said, okay, you're obeying me. You're doing what you should and what you're supposed to do. I'm going to add to your number, not just one day, not just two days, but daily people were getting saved and their little community kept growing and growing and growing. And it's just, this is how we're supposed to live. This is what we're called to do um, as believers. And hopefully the fact that we haven't been able to get together and then we haven't been able to get together in fellowship and be together like we normally would Hopefully that makes us hunger for it even more. So when churches open back up and when the opportunity opens back up to come back to school and be meeting face to face, hopefully we will be fellowshipping and sharing and praising the Lord together and lifting each other up and taking care of each other because that's what we're commanded to do in Acts chapter two, the last section of it. So go out and live in community however that looks for you. If that means, you know, you're just at home, live in community with your family. Help your siblings with their homework. Help your parents keep the house clean. Live in community. Take care of each other. Lift, lift each other up and, and be an encouragement to each other. That's it for today. We'll talk to you next time. Bye. God bless.